time with Timmy the Toolman, Sean. Today, what we're gonna show you how to do is install some lighting on your truck. We decided to partner with Oxbeam for our lighting systems on our rigs because number one, they have a good reputation in the industry and number two, their lighting systems are very affordable. Now, there are many other companies you can get lighting systems from. Some are quite expensive, some are similar to Oxbeam. Both Sean and I wanted an affordable option for our trucks and to share with you, our viewers. Lighting is one of those things that we don't think you need to spend your bank account on. We both have third generation Toyota 4Runners. We didn't exactly pay that much for them and we don't want to spend more money on lighting than we actually spend on the trucks. In this video, we're going to show you how to install the lights on our rigs and show you how to wire them up. And then we're gonna go take them out somewhere in the hills where there's no ambient light from street lights. And we are gonna test these lights out for you. This video is a part two of the video we already put out, which showed how we installed a eight gang switch panel in my rig and a six gang switch panel in Sean's rig. So first we're gonna explain the lights that we chose for our rigs. And then after that, we're gonna show you some additional things we bought to accomplish this job. So here's the lights I got for my rig. I got a 22 inch light bar that's gonna go on my front bumper. I've got two of these five inch lights and these are also gonna go on the front bumper in the cutouts of my CBI bumper. And then I have six of these three inch light pods and I'm gonna put all these on my roof rack. I'm gonna put two on the driver's side, two on the passenger side, and then two on the rear. And this makes up all the lights I got for my truck. So I got the same pods that Tim got, but instead of going on my roof rack, I'm gonna mount two on some ditch light brackets from CBI. I got these big circular lights that are gonna go on the front of my ARB bumper. This one's gonna be installed right on front of the ARB bumper as well. Now that we've talked about the lights we got for our rigs, I'm gonna show you some additional stuff we bought to accomplish this job. The first item is these Lamphus off-road light clamps that I bought to be able to affix the three inch light pods onto my roof rack. I bought three of these kits. Each of these kits has two brackets for you to use and a multitude of different thickness pads to accommodate different diameter piping for whatever roof rack you have. Also for my installation, I bought this KC wire hider. In order to run the wiring from the fuse block to the lights on the roof rack, you have a couple choices. One way is to run the wires through the firewall, through the cab, and then up through a hole, either existing or one that you drill into the roof to run the wires to those lights. I'm gonna choose the path of least resistance and I'm gonna run the wires through this KC wire hider right up along the edge of the windshield on the driver's side, right along the A-pillar, and then that's gonna be my path to get the wires ran to those roof lights. Another thing I bought is some weatherproof connectors because not every one of the lights we got from Oxbeam has a nice type of easily disconnectable connector. So at least on one of the sets of lights, those five inch ones I'm gonna put on my bumper, I'm gonna wire in one of these connectors so I can easily disconnect them if I ever wanted to be able to remove the bumper without actually having to disconnect the lights from the bumper. We have some shrink tubing that's gonna be able to make the connections more weatherproof and it just makes it look cleaner. We have a couple different boxes of connectors. One is butt connectors and the other one is terminal connectors. We have some different colored wire so we could differentiate the wiring going to each of the lights, mainly to the ones going on my roof rack. And finally, we bought some split wire loom to run the wires through to protect them. With all that said, we are gonna start getting these lights installed. Here's one of the light brackets that I bought to mount the three inch light pods onto my roof rack. You've got the two sides, and then you've got a multitude of different thicknesses of the rubber grommets that go in between to capture your roof rack. You got a thick one, a medium one, 
and then the thinnest one. And for the diameter of the piping on my roof rack, I found that I need to pair up the thickest one and the thinnest one to get a proper grab of the pipe. So all you do, these have little ridges in them. You just push them in and to where it seats in place, the grooves align. That looks like a little bit out of alignment, so I could just move it a little bit, and that looks better. And then you just do the same with the other one and put that one in there. And then it's simply bringing the two halves together on the pipe, and then you have two small Allen head bolts with some lock washers, and you bring the two halves together. Simple as that. I'm gonna get this installed on my roof rack, and then I'll show you how to mount the light. So with these three inch light pods, it comes with all the hardware you need and actually a couple different size Allen wrenches to be able to tighten and loosen the connectors. And then the smaller Allen wrench would be if you wanted to change the lens and maybe put an amber lens on there, it gives you an Allen wrench for that application. I already figured out how I want to affix this bracket to the light. There's two mounting spots one where the bolts are currently screwed into, and then you have the secondary one. And then you could put the bracket on two different directions, and I figured for my application, I like it in this orientation. So I just grab my four millimeter Allen. I like this better than to use the one that came with the kit because this is quicker to turn because it has a T handle. So you just loosen these up and take them out. Okay, once you got both off, you get your bracket in place, but I learned the hard way is that you need to get this bolt in first to be able to mount it to the bracket I already have on the roof rack, because if you don't get this in first, then once this is in place, you can't get the bolt in. So you have to put that in first, and you'll see it has some ridges in there that are meant to capture the head of the bolt so it can't turn when you're underneath tightening the nut. So then you just get it in place, with the two bolts, the flat washer and the lock washer, and you just get them cinched up snug, but not all the way tight just yet. As you see, I already have the other light mounted and I'm gonna mount this one the same way. You have your bolt already captured in the bracket and then you just slide it down through there. And then you come in with a flat washer first underneath, lock washer, and then you just get your nut on. And I have this bracket loose to where I can manipulate it. So I have it up high to where I could easily get onto the nut with this flex head 17 millimeter ratcheting box and wrench. And I'm gonna cinch up this nut. While I'm cinching it up, I'm looking at the light to make sure it looks pretty square left and right. And you're gonna wanna hold a little counter pressure on the light while you're tightening that nut. So the whole thing doesn't turn. Okay, that's nice and tight. And then now I'm gonna rotate the light downward and kind of mimic the angle of the other one. It might take a little trial and error, but one thing that I did do before settling on a height for the light is I lifted up the hatch to the furthest opening to see if this rear spoiler would come in contact with the light. So I already determined that this height is good. Now I'll just lock these small Allen bolts down this is gonna probably be something that I'm gonna to have to dial in once I get the lights illuminated to see I got the pattern behind me that I want, whether it's too low or too high, so I can make those fine adjustments later on. So that's how you would install one of these three inch pods using this style of bracket for a tubular style roof rack. Now I'm gonna show you how to install one of these five inch lights on the front of my CBI bumper. It comes with two bolts on each side this one is the fixed one, and this one is a pivot bolt to where you can pivot the light to the direction you want. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a five millimeter Allen and I'm gonna take out the pivot bolt. This allows me to be able to move the bracket enough to where I could sneak this bolt through. So I have to sneak it in from the inside out. So once you've got your bolt in place in the bracket, you're gonna wanna get those pivot bolts back in and cinch them up snug. Now, depending on how much room you have in your bumper or wherever you're installing this is gonna determine if you're gonna go ahead and cinch these down tight 
because once you get it where you're getting it and it's too tight to get in there with Allen wrenches, you won't be able to make the adjustments. So with this application, it's pretty tight in here. So I might have to remove the light a couple times, make a fine adjustment with the side screws, and then finally dial in the level of the light to where I want it. There's a rubber pad that the kit comes with. So you slide the rubber pad on. I have a slot right here in the CBI bumper that I could mount it to. So I just come in here, slide the bolt through. I get the rubber pad oriented right. And then I just come in with a flat washer, a lock washer, and then the nut. And this nut is also a 17 millimeter. I'm gonna cinch it up with my 17 millimeter ratcheting box and wrench. The five inch lights that I'm running on my CBI bumper didn't come with a nice connector like this. So I'm gonna butt splice the female connector to the light and then the male side is gonna hook up to the wiring that runs to the fuse block. With a butt connector, you only have so much metal to grab. So you're gonna wanna cut both sides to about the same length. These come pre-stripped, but I'm gonna cut this down to about that size. If you ended up cutting too much off and you had to strip it, then you would just use your wire strippers to make it a little bit bigger. These wire strippers are really nice. I like the way they operate. They basically grab the wire and strip it in one movement. I'll trim this just a little bit more. And this is the only example I'm gonna show of how to do the butt connectors. So the way I do it is I slide it in from right to left. I hold the connector with my left hand pulling back against the wire so it stays in place. And then I come in with my ratcheting crimpers that have the sizes marked here so you can't mistake them. I'm gonna use the blue crimp area, which is for 14 to 16 gauge. And then I'm just gonna come in here and ratchet it down and capture the wire. And then you can just do a test pull to make sure you captured it. So this style of butt connector that I like to use is a weatherproof connector. It shrinks down, it has adhesive on the inside. So as you heat it and shrink it down to the outside diameter of the wire, it glues it in place. So no contaminants can get in there. If you didn't have this style of connector, then you could slip over some shrink tubing and then you can then shrink this around the connection to make it a weatherproof connection. So it's personal choice. This is overkill because like I said, the butt connector in itself is a weatherproof connection. I just went a little overboard on this one. Now I'm gonna talk to you about mounting the 22 inch light bar to my CBI front bumper. You have two ways of mounting it. There's these side mounts that would be connected here. And depending on where the holes are, you can have the flanges pointing outward or pointing inward. The other way is you can use these channel mounts. You slide them into the center and then you can slide them to the hole position on your bumper and this makes it very adjustable to your particular bumper so you're not forced to drill holes if you don't want to drill holes. And then the way that these will affix into the channel once you figure out the position so they don't move is you have to put these little set screws in. They're a three millimeter Allen set screw. You put them in from this direction, then you just grab your three millimeter Allen and screw them in to where they're a little bit recessed. This piece marries up to this piece. So these two go together like this. And then you come in from the underside with this six millimeter Allen bolt with a lock washer and flat washer on. You slide it in and then you get that started. So you just wanna snug it up to where you could still adjust it. You would slide the assembly back into the channel and then just put it in place like that. The way it affixes to the bumper is you come in with one of these bolts, the bolt head will be captured in this section here to where it can't turn. You come in from the underside with a flat washer, lock washer and the nut, and then that's how you would affix it. Now. What I'm planning on doing is getting both these brackets in. I'm going to get the side to side orientation to where it looks even on my bumper. And then I'm going to come in with a little paint pen and I'm going to mark the channel where these need to be locked in. Then I'm going to take the light back off. 
I'm gonna take the assembly back out and then I'm gonna disconnect this six millimeter bolt and then I'm gonna come in with my three millimeter Allen and I'm gonna lock it in place. So just say for instance, there's a couple paint marks there. I line it up and then when I drive these in, it's gonna cinch this thing up to where now the light won't be able to slide left and right in these brackets, they're locked in. So that's gonna be the way I'm gonna mount it. Another option you have with these lights to get it set correctly is you can get a piece of blue tape, run it across the distance of your light bar, and then you're gonna transfer this piece of tape onto your bumper. You're going to mark the holes, and then you can come back over here, place it exactly where you got it, and then you know exactly where these mounts need to go. So here we are on my Araby bumper. There's some holes that are already provisioned in this bumper. I kind of eyeballed where it is side to side and got it even. And now I'm gonna mark the holes. Now I'm gonna transfer this back over to the light bar so I know where to set those nuts that slide into the light bar itself. So here are my capture nuts in the light bar. You can see those holes that I marked, everything's lined up. So in regards to this type of mounting style with the adjustability, both Sean and I found that once you tighten this Allen bolt up, it wants to recenter it to where the light is pointing pretty much straight out or maybe a little bit upward. What I decided to do was abandon this style and go to the side brackets, which do work for my application. In order to get the holes to line up well, I had to point the L bracket inboard and then I just went through with the bolts and I put the washer, lock washer and the nut underneath and I cinched them up. With these three millimeter Allen heads, I can adjust the tilt really nicely. So if I just simply loosen these a little bit, you can see how much adjustability I get with this. Once you have the light adjusted to where you want it, you'll want to tighten this primary bolt right here, which is a four millimeter Allen head. And as extra insurance, you could put a couple other bolts that the kit comes with these three millimeter Allen heads. So these will help hold the position. So you're not just relying on this one bolt on each side to maintain your adjustment. And because these are Allen bolts, these lights could be fairly easy to steal. So we're gonna provide a link in the video description to some security bolts that you could purchase to replace the ones that come with the kit, just to make it a little harder for someone to steal your lights. For my setup, because the distance of my holes, the side brackets like Tim used wasn't gonna work for me. So I moved forward with these first mounts that we were gonna use. On this ARB bumper, I had to go in between here and it was kind of difficult because the winch is in the way. So depending on your bumper application, you are just gonna have to kind of finagle a way that works for you. So like Tim mentioned, these mounts kind of force the light bar once you start to tighten on the bolt into a certain angle and that angle is slightly up, or at least it seems so. But when you go outside and you get this on the road and you turn the lights on, there is a nice spread of light all over the place. So it's not really pointed up high per se, although it looks like it, it's actually pretty ideal. I have the same pod lights that Tim has on his roof rack mounted to these CBI ditch bracket mounts. And the light itself is secured with the through bolt, I had to move the mounting location from this center place down one step. It was nice that they had that because otherwise it wouldn't clear this mounting on the bottom. So I'm just gonna scratch the surface a little bit on how these are mounted. Essentially, it mounts on top the hood hinge right here. And what you have to do is release all these 10 millimeter bolts that are holding the fender on and you pry this fender back. And then these secure in the same holes that the hood hinge uses. And then you have to trim your hood cowl a little bit to accommodate the space that the bracket is taken up. Of course, you gotta run the wiring. So just find a tasteful way to just run it where you want it out of the way, not gonna get caught in anything. And then again, this fuse panel makes it super easy. The red wires you see there are the positives for the lights. And then I actually grounded the negatives right here on the side of the fender. So you can see all those connectors kind of sharing the same bolt. But again, I just, tastefully, depending on your interpretation, routed the wire where I needed it to go. And I'm gonna zip tie it down there so it's nice and secure. And you can see the connector there where it connects. And same thing for the ditch lights. Again, I'll need to kind of figure out a way where I can secure it 
so it's not just dangling. So for these 360 Pro Series aux beam, seven inch high intensity off-road fog lights, we have the mounting hardware and you'll see it comes with this through bolt, so to speak, goes to that center hole, little rubber pad. And then you have a washer, a lock washer, and a nylon lock nut. And I'm gonna mount that right here on my front bumper in place of my Hella lights. So it's replacing these. And the one problem I ran into here is the mounting holes on this ARB bumper didn't allow me to mount it through the intended center hole here where this bolt would typically go through. So I was forced to mount it on this corner right here. And I actually took a bolt out of my bag of bolts and had to use a slightly smaller diameter to fit in this adjustable area right here. This bolt doesn't actually fit in that. So I had to source some other bolts, but that was unique to my setup. So unless you get into a situation where the light runs into the grill like mine, you can just mount it on the center bolt. This is the wiring harness that comes with this set of lights. And just like the other lights, they all have a wiring harness that comes with them. But we just really harvested this main connector and then used the positive and negative cable that's built into this harness here to hook up to our switch panel. For the wiring on this truck, I'm actually going to utilize this pre-built wiring harness with relay and fuse built in because on this truck, I don't have a switch panel. But for this install, we wanna showcase using the wiring harness that comes inside the packaging so you can see how this works. I got the wiring harness connected to the lights. I snaked them through and fastened them up with some zip ties, put them through a hole in this core support. And then here's the kind of pile of wires is kind of remaining. And I'll have to tidy that up later. We have the positive to the positive and the negative is grounded right here. Then this wire was fed underneath the fender, kind of tucked it out of the way. And now we got to go through the firewall. This plug connector is pretty big. So what I'm doing is I'm depinning the connector so I can fit these smaller wires through and it's going to be less of a pain to fit everything through. So in order to depin these, there's a little slot at the top of the pin there and you can just stick something in there. It forces that little tab on top down and then you can pull them out. So that's how I'm getting these out of the connector. Now I'm gonna put it through the firewall and then connect the switch in the cabin. So now that this cable has been pushed through the firewall and is ran inside the cabin, now you're able to connect the other end of this wiring harness and if you like this style switch, then you can cut out a place in your interior, maybe a blank switch panel, and call it a day. But what I'm going to do is swap out this generic switch for this switch. It's going to give it a more OEM look because it is a factory Toyota switch. This happens to be a defog switch that I harvested from another Toyota at the junkyard. This is a way sicker mod. It's going to look way more OEM and it's going to give me some cool features like two points of illumination so I can illuminate the symbol itself. You can also mod these switches. So you can replace the symbol on the center insert with whatever symbol you want. There's a really cool write-up on I Hate Mud. So go check that out. I'll leave the link in the video description in case you want to do that. And if you prefer an OEM look in your installation, definitely hit me up. I got tons of these switches and I can send you one. I'll put my email in the video description in case you're interested. So taking a look at the back of the connector, we're gonna use all five wires. Three of the wires are gonna hook up to these three wires that come off the harness. And the other two wires are gonna hook up to an existing circuit already in the truck. Taking a look at the back of this connector, I'm going to splice pin two into this black wire, which ends up leading to 86 on the relay. I'm gonna hook up pin number six to this metal blue wire. That ends up leading to pin 85 on the relay. And this bottom right pin, pin number three, I'm gonna splice into the white connector that runs to pin number 30 on the relay. For pin number one and number four, I'm gonna hook these up to an existing circuit that runs to the 12 volt outlet at the bottom of the stereo surround. And for some of these wires, they are the same exact color, so you just match them up. But if for some reason your colors are not the same, then you can use a multimeter to test which one's positive and which one's negative. 
Pin number one will be your positive, and pin number four will be your ground or your negative. If you don't want to tap into the 12 volt outlet like I did, you can always run to a tap a fuse to the fuse panel located where the kick panel is. Pin one, where the green wire is coming from, would run to the positive to that tap a fuse, and the white wire here, pin number four, would run to ground. So that's how you'd wire up this OEM style switch to work with these lights. For pin number four and pin number one, the green and white wire on this pigtail, I actually used some wire taps and tapped into my 12 volt source that leads to the 12 volt outlet. That way, in case I wanted to return it back to factory, I could remove those wire taps, put some electrical tape on the wires just to tighten them up or maybe even some heat shrink and it would be basically back to new. So if you wanna connect a wiring harness that comes with your lights, or you wanna build your own wiring harness that includes a relay and a fuse, you can use this wiring diagram I built to run the appropriate wires to the pins on the relay and the appropriate wires on the switch. This will also be posted for you to download in the video description. So let's go back into the truck and see how everything looks installed. So for the mounting of the switch, I chose to do a little sick mod into the bottom of the stereo surround here. And as you can see, I got a series of switches so I can hook up more stuff in the future. For this retrofit, I got the idea off T4R.org. And essentially what you do is you harvest some sort of interior piece off of a Toyota that has these same switches. And for this one, there was four switches. I can't remember exactly what this is from, but if you look from the same generation, the same era as these forerunners, so late 90s, early 2000s, you'll find different vehicles have different areas for mounting switches. And so I cut that out. I cut out this area in the stereo surround and I bondoed it and then sanded it and then painted it. So it looks super OEM and that was the look I was going for. The reason I had to do this is because I ran out of space on this side and I had to get creative. With the car running, when I switch on the lights, the switches illuminate. And then if you press the button to turn it on, the side light will illuminate, indicating that your lights are turned on. I'm gonna start off on my rig by attaching this KC wire hider to the driver's side of my windshield. So we got it going up right to the start of the bend here. And then I just marked it with a paint pen and I cut it with a pair of scissors. And then the kit comes with this 3M adhesive. Before putting it on, I cleaned up the surface with some rubbing alcohol. And then I also cleaned up the windshield with some rubbing alcohol to make it to where the adhesive will stick really well. What I'm choosing to do is have the opening facing the inside. It looks like you could do it either way, but I think I'm going to like it better with the opening facing inside. So then I just have to peel all these things off and then set it in place. So I have all the strips taken off to where now I could put it in place. So just push it down, make sure it's adhered really well. So this is going to be my way of routing the wires up the windshield and then to the roof rack. So with these fuse panels, they specify the maximum amperage that the circuit can handle. With this particular fuse panel, it goes in descending order from 30 amp, 20 amp, 10 amp, and 5 amp. And it shows all this in the instruction manual that comes with the kit. The highest amperage draw lights that I got are both on my front bumper, the light bar and the 5 inch pods. So I connected up my five inch pod lights to the number one circuit and I connected my light bar to the number five circuit. The way you know the amperage circuit you need to connect to is based off of the stock wiring harness that comes with the lights. So here's the wiring harness for the light bar and the harness has a built-in inline fuse. So if you take the cover off and you take a look at the fuse, it's a 30 amp circuit. So that's how I knew which circuit to connect to. The other sets of lights that I'm powering up are the six lights that are going to my roof rack. And all those circuits require a 10 amp circuit. So what I did is I connected up one set of lights to the number three circuit on this side of the fuse block. And then on this side, I used the number six and the number seven circuit 
I pulled out the 20 amp fuse that was here originally and I replaced it with the 10 amp fuse. You wouldn't want to leave a 20 amp fuse in that position because if there's an overload of the circuit, you want the fuse to blow before you burn up your wiring. So if you do something similar to what I did and you're going to drop down the amperage for a particular application, then you're going to want to put the appropriate size fuse in that spot. And that's what I did here. You'll see that I use some shrink terminal connectors to connect up to the fuse block. In the kit that I had, I noticed that my smallest terminal connector would not fit in the slot provided. So what I had to do is I took my bench grinder and I took a little bit of material off each side to where it would slide in place. So now for the running of the wires. I'll start off with the light bar. This is the original harness. You'll see it's got the built-in fuse. It's got the connectors that you would connect up to your positive and negative terminal of your battery. It's got the relay and it's got the switch. The beauty of the aux beam switch panel is you don't need most of this. We don't need the switch. We don't need the relay and we don't need the built-in fuse. The one thing that I did use from this harness is the terminal connector that runs to the light and the wiring that came with it. So what I did is I snipped off the wires right here, the positive and negative from the relay. And I used that part of the harness to be able to power the light. So the wiring from the light bar leaves the circuit here. It routes right along this area on the inside of the battery in the fuse box. It goes in front of the battery and then it goes through a hole in the body, the same hole that I used to run the wiring for my Warren winch. If you click on the link above, you'll be able to see that video. And then the wiring runs right along the frame member, right in front of the AC condenser, and then it runs right to here. Pretty simple. Now I'll talk about how I wired up the five inch light pods on my CBI bumper. So you have your negative and your positive running from the fuse panel circuit and it has to run to two separate lights. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the two positive wires for the connectors and you're gonna join them together. And then you're gonna take the two negative wires and you're gonna connect those together by twisting them. Now this is just for explanation purposes, but realize that one of these is gonna be quite a bit longer because it has to run over to the other light. Next, you're gonna choose a butt connector that's gonna be the appropriate size for the size of the wire. Now normally, these individual wires would take a smaller butt connector, a size 14 to 16 gauge, but because you've joined the wires, the combination is bigger, so you would, end up using a 10 to 12 gauge. So you'd put it over the wire and you would crimp it and you'd do the same with the other side. You put it over and you'd crimp it. So now you're gonna wanna connect up the positive and negative wires to the other side of the butt connector. Because you're using a bigger butt connector than you would wanna use for this particular gauge wire, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna strip off some extra sheathing so you can fold the wire over to increase the gauge of the wire to where it will fit in and be able to crimp properly in this bigger butt connector. So you'd have your negative wire and you do the same with the positive wire. And then you just crimp those with your crimper. That's how you would be able to take power from one circuit and split it off to two different lights. So the wiring path from the fuse block to those five inch pods was the same path that I used for the light bar. It runs on the inside of the fender, in front of the battery, through the body, to the light on the driver's side, and then the wiring runs along the frame member, in front of the AC condenser, and then to the second light on the passenger side. Those five inch pod lights didn't come with the connectors, so I wired in those connectors from the kit that I bought on Amazon. So now let me talk about the wiring for the six three inch pod lights that went on my roof rack. I utilized the number three circuit and the number six and seven circuits. 
from the packet of wires that I bought on Amazon, I chose black and red that are gonna run to my rear lights. I chose blue and orange for the passenger side lights, and I chose green and purple for the driver side. So the six wires leave the fuse panel and they join up in this split wire loom right here. I made the wires a little bit long right here so they would dip down in a U. So any water traveling down the wires is gonna drip down at this lowest point and not be able to travel back to the fuse block itself. The wires run right through this path right here. I did drill a hole in this plastic drip edge right here so I can secure the wire loom with a zip tie right here. The wires go right underneath the hood and when the hood closes, it doesn't crimp the wires. There's enough room for all six wires to run underneath there without being damaged. I did use a second zip tie right here and there's no drilling necessary. There's actually a hole right here that I could feed the zip tie through and I secured it a little bit better. The six wires run right through this KC wire hider. And then when it leaves the top of the wire hider, I put it back into some split wire loom and it runs right along my wind fairing for my roof rack. And then the wires come up to here and then this is the main juncture where they split off. You can see right here that I ran the wires that go to the passenger side along the front of the roof rack and they route over to the passenger side. From here, I split off into two different split wire looms running to the, the different lights. One set of wires runs to the driver's side lights and then the other set of wires runs to the rear lights. And because each set of these lights is powered by one circuit, you again have to split the power to two lights, just like I showed for the five inch pod lights. It's the same exact technique. So that's how I was able to run power to the lights on the light bar. And you'll see along the whole path, I used quite a few zip ties to secure it to this bottom pipe to where they wouldn't be hanging down and it looks fairly clean. For all the wiring on the roof rack, the one thing that I wish I would have done a little bit better was hide the connectors by tucking them up underneath and zip tying them up a little higher. For the three inch light pods that I mounted on my roof rack, they have interchangeable lenses. They come with a clear lens, but you can put on an amber lens. With the amber lens, it will diffuse the light as opposed to the clear lens, which is more of like a spotlight. I chose to put amber lenses on the rear because I wanted to be able to have lights that would enable people to see me in a four wheeling application, like in a convoy of rigs going through Death Valley. And sometimes you're driving at high rates of speed and having an amber lens pointed to the rear will enable the person behind me to see me easier, but not blind them with a spot type of light. So that's why I chose to put the amber lenses on the rear. I might find that I'll wanna put amber lenses for all six lights on my roof rack, but I need to test them out first to see if I like having a spotlight or maybe having more of a diffuse type of lighting for the sides of my rig. When you get into a project like this, you'll probably think, ah, oh, it's not gonna take that long. Well, let me tell you, running the wiring to six lights on my roof rack it took a lot of time. The wiring for the front light bar and for the two five inch light pods, not that hard, but running the wires from the fuse block up the windshield to all these lights on the roof rack and to make it look pretty clean and to get all the wires in the split wire loom, it took quite a bit of time. To do all the wiring for all the lights on this truck, it took me over a day to do it. I will say that I'm not the best with electrical wiring, but it is very tedious. So just know that if you're running a lot of wiring, it's gonna take you quite a bit of time to do it right and to do it really clean. I'm gonna share a tip with you of how you could easily get your wires ran into the split wire loom. You're gonna to wanna to choose a box end wrench that's big enough to fit over the wires you're running in the split wire loom. 
So I have two wires that are 14 gauge. I'm choosing a six millimeter box end wrench because it will fit over the wires pretty well. You next get the wrench into the split wire loom and then you hold the wire and the split wire loom with one hand while you're working the wrench down the split wire loom, pushing the wires into it. So this is a lot better than doing this, trying to feed it in with your hands and getting really frustrated. So I'm glad Sean shared this tip with me because it made the running of the wires on my roof rack way less painful. Pretty freaking awesome way to run the wires into the split wire loom. In regards to the wiring of Oxbeam lights, Oxbeam does offer lights with multiple functions. And I wanted to talk to you about the limitations of using the multi-mode lights with the Oxbeam switch panel. The Oxbeam switch panel is a simple on and off. So when you push the button, it sends power to the circuit. When you push the button again, it turns off power to that circuit. With these multi-mode lights, they have a positive wire, a negative wire, and then they have a third wire that will change the function of the light, whether it's flashing, going to an amber color, whatever the function is, that's what this third wire is for. And then when it comes to the wiring harness, it's very similar. You have the negative and positive wires running to the battery with an inline fuse. You have the relay. You have the wires going to the individual pod lights. And in this case, there's three wires instead of two. And then you have the switch that powers on the light and will change the mode. Originally, I bought these multi-mode lights thinking that's what I wanted to go with. But then I realized that using the switch panel with a multi-mode light, you kind of lose the benefit of having the switch panel. Because if you're going to want to be able to switch the modes for your set of lights, you're still going to have to utilize this switch and you're going to have to run this inside your cab so you can switch the modes. So in my opinion, you kind of lose the benefit of having the Oxbeam switch panel, which is limiting the wiring and having your lights being controlled with one panel. So you have to know that if you're going to buy multi-mode lights, that you're still going to have to run this switch into your cab to be able to control the mode function. So that's why I decided to switch back to singular function lights for all my lights. So I wouldn't have to run all these individual switches into my cab so I can change the modes. I wanted to share that with you in case you were looking at the multi-mode lights. You need to know the limitations of the switch panel when working with these types of lights. Here's the stickers that I chose for the switch panel. For the five inch front bumper lights, I just used bumper. For the light bar, well, it says light bar, that's pretty self-explanatory. For the lights that point to the rear off the roof rack, I used rear. For the left side and right side lights on the roof rack, I couldn't really find a sticker that said left roof or right roof. It wasn't available, so I just used the arrows. Left is driver, right is passenger. All right, now that we're done explaining how we mounted the lights and wired them up, we're going to go up into the Santa Cruz Mountains and we're going to test these lights out. Regular headlights, light bar. Regular headlights, light bar. Quite a difference. And when you got a straightaway, you can really see super far. But with the twisty turny road, it's going to limit the distance, obviously, the lights can travel because uh, you're going to be hitting embankments and trees and whatever. Now we'll do another comparison of the regular headlights and the five inch bumper lights. So regular headlights, bumper lights, headlights, bumper lights, quite a drastic difference. shoes So 
here we go on my rig. And this is the regular headlights. Here's the brights. Brights. And I got the same light bar, so we'll see what that looks like. Wow. That is bright. Super lights it up. Let's see these light pods on the side. There's a right one. There's a left one. We'll turn all of them off. Turn all of them on. Just definitely enough light to see. All right, we are all done with this series. We first showed you how to install the switch panel inside your cab and the fuse block inside your engine compartment, a couple different ways to do both of those. Then we showed you how to mount the lights, how to wire them, and then finally we showed you how well these aux beam lights work. As you saw, they work pretty damn well especially those light bars on our bumpers. Those light bars emit a ton of light. Sean and I are both in agreement that the only situation where we would think you would need a light better than Oxbeam offers is maybe you're racing the Baja 1000 and you're traveling at 100 miles an hour through the desert and you're gonna outrun the lights on your rig. You're basically going to be traveling so fast that you're not going to be able to accurately see the terrain with the light you're using. So like I said, unless you're in some type of professional racing situation, this aux beam setup that we introduced you to in this video series is a pretty good system to go with. It's economical, it's very functional, and the lights work very well. As always, be sure to check out the video description for a list of all the products we use from Oxbeam, for a list of the additional products we bought to accomplish this job, like butt connectors, extra wiring, that sort of thing. And then also be sure to check the list of tools we use in case you don't have all the tools necessary to pull off this job. You can buy the same tools or you'll get a good idea of what you need to get to accomplish it. And finally, be sure to check for a pinned comment where we will give updates to how well these lights are working for us. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Toll Man and Sean. We will, of course, be back with more videos for you. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when we put out new content. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care. Bye-bye. Sick mods and sick lighting on your Toyota SUV or truck. Peace out. Happy wrenching. Bye-bye. <sighs>